That is Dan Gilmore of Supply Chain Digest and the Supply Chain Television Channel. Very pleased to be here for another in our great ongoing series of Supply Chain Thought Leader videos uh, here today to discuss a very interesting topic, and that is WMS Warehouse Management System in the Cloud. Of course, this whole cloud computing uh, thing has uh, really taken off. We're going to delve into that a little bit today, explain some of it, talk about what the ramifications are for warehouse management systems. Uh, I'm very pleased to do that today with a real uh, expert in the topic, uh, somebody we've had a lot of interaction with in the past. That's uh, Chad Collins. Uh, he's VP of Marketing and Strategy at High Jump Software. We're talking to him today from our Supply Chain Newsmaker video line in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, Chad, uh, thanks so much for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me, Dan. Okay, you know, there's so much, and we've done a lot of work in, on this in Supply Chain Digest, but there's so many terms out there. We started with hosted, and then we kind of moved on to man, and then we got this kind of mouthful, software as a service, or SaaS. Now everyone's talking about cloud computing. Uh, in some cases, it makes, you know, uh, operation folks, logistics distribution folks' eyes kind of start to roll. They think it's an IT thing, but I always tell them this really is a profound change, something you really do need to pay attention to. It has a lot of ramifications for operations, not just IT. Uh, give us your thoughts, Chad. What is cloud computing, and, and is it the same as SaaS on some of these other terms, or, or is there a difference? No, there, there really is a difference, and I, it is confusing. Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff, and I still sometimes get confused. But I think we're arriving at a conclusion around the definitions of these things. Uh, you know, obviously, we started out many years ago uh, with the ASP model, which was really having your technology provider host uh, your solution for you in, in a dedicated computing uh, environment. We sort of then moved into uh, software as a service, which was interesting uh, in that uh, you were able to purchase the software typically on a subscription basis. Again, it was hosted. But really, the, the challenge with the software as a service model is everybody was running the exact same version of the software, and, and oftentimes you need supply chain execution applications to be t tailored to the specific needs of your environment. And that's very difficult in a, in a t true multi-tenant software as a service environment. Cloud computing really provides the best of all worlds, and, and through ad advances in virtualization technology and other advances in computing technology, now what we're able to do is provide a flexible solution that's really tailored to the unique needs of a, a warehouse environment, meaning their physical layout, the material handling characteristics of their product, yet still have the flexibility to host that, provide it in a subscription model, but the customer's solution may look different than other customer solutions run in that cloud. So it's really the best of all worlds. You get the flexibility you want as an operations person, but at the same time, you get the ease of deployment with the cloud model. And I think that's, uh, that is particularly for WMS, as you say, which uh, always involves uh, tailoring however you get there uh, to, uh, to meet those unique needs. Being able to do that in a cloud model clearly is uh, really a necessity, I think, to make this work. And that kind of gets to maybe my next question. Warehouse management, for a whole bunch of reasons, including what we just talked about there, you know, all the physical stuff you got, RF and, and, uh, and that, the material handling equipment, there's been concerns in the past that, you know, versus, say, transportation management, was, which was pretty early to at least the hosted model, uh, global trade management, some of these things, that WMS, you know, was going to have a hard time working, I'll just call it in on-demand mode or hosted mode, uh, because you know, you have to have these real-time interfaces to conveyor systems, you got these RF systems where you want sub-second response, all those physical kind of things going on there. Is that a valid concern or has cloud computing and the related technology really put that as something companies don't really need to be too concerned about anymore? Yeah, no, I think in the pure software as a service uh, world, that, those were all valid concerns. And, and what I saw concerns were, were around, you know, Primarily, software as a service works very well for desktop applications, but as you know, with WMS systems, the bulk of the activity is done by material handlers with holding mobile computers with barcode readers on them. Uh, the, the other challenge with the software as a service model was just the, the flexibility that's required with WMS in terms of material handling and, and unique facilities layout. Again, with the cloud option, you can really provide that flexibility. And what the other thing that cloud has been allowed us to be able to do is allow those mobile devices to connect directly to the application server that's hosted in the cloud. Now, additionally, one of the, the historical challenges to all this has been, what about the real-time connection with the material handling equipment? And we feel that we've been able to address that through our testing and development cycles by using a model where we put a small controller box 
box in the actual warehouse that facilitates the real-time communications to the, the warehouse control system, and then that box will communicate to the cloud. So there's really a, a very small footprint of that WMS um, on the customer site, and they still get all the benefits of the cloud deployment. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it that approach before, but that controller box for the uh, MH, uh, MHE material handling equipment uh, it actually makes a lot of sense, I, I, and I can see how that would, uh, you know, cer certainly offer an alternative solution to that uh, that problem. Um, you know, there's a lot. You know, when you talk about cloud computing again, it means different things to different people. But certainly, you know, there's there's maybe something in it for the IT folks, as we've talked about, or, or and, and implied. There's certainly some things in it for operations folks. But you know, what what sort of the the way that these different folks, and maybe even some others in the organization are or should be thinking about cloud computing for WMS? Yeah, no, good question, and I think the answer is different based on the functional area of the organization. So uh, let's start with the operations uh, team. A couple things that are interesting to the operations team. Traditionally, we see that even though the operations team has built their solid business case for WMS, there's a strong return on investment for the WMS uh, a lot of times they're having a difficult time getting that project prioritized within the IT queue. There's other initiatives, oftentimes compliance or just keeping the infrastructure up and running for the IT organization that become barriers to implementing something that's going to derive hard savings like a WMS system. So for the operations guy, cloud presents an option for them to minimize the impact on their IT organization and reprioritize the project within the whole queue of IT projects due to the it being less demanding on IT. Additionally, for the IT team, you know, their, they, their involvement is substantially minimized. Certainly we want them to have buy-in and understanding, but really without the infrastructure components and really without the burden of doing upgrades, and uh, rolling out patches and fixes, really all that is handled by the technology provider in this case, so the dependence on the IT organization is really minimized. And then for the finance team, the cloud really presents an interesting option in terms of how you pay for your software. We offer the cloud option in a subscription model, and oftentimes you're able to get into the cloud option with very little upfront capital. So you, you're not buying a lot of uh, hardware and servers, and plus it's on a subscription basis. So you're really able to, to look at this and really speed up that time to value because you've minimized the upfront costs. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of benefits. And I, I like to use, I've used it a couple times in Supply Chain Digest, an example I think very much relates to uh, operations people. You know, in the past with a traditional license for WMS, you know, you had to buy not only the subscription for the license and everything, but you had to buy a computer server that was scaled to meet peak needs, even though you maybe only needed that peak uh, transactional volume a few weeks or you know a month or two a year. And I always say, you know, just imagine if rather than having to buy a sort sorter with say 36 diverts that meets the peak needs at you know prime uh, shipping season and then sits half utilized the rest of the year, you know, what if you could buy a sorter that was just scaled down to meet your everyday needs and push a button and it would magically expand another 12 or 20 diverts for those a few weeks of peak and then scale back down. And, and Chad, that's really what you can do on the computing side when you move to a cloud model, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's a great analogy, Dan. With the cloud model, we are able to scale the computing capacity that a customer has used to meet the actual demand. And uh, this is really a, just a huge advance in, in enterprise applications in, in general, and really uh, is a way to buy exactly what you need and ha at any given point in time. So I think the sorter analogy is a fantastic analogy for operations folks. Well, as I said at the beginning, you know, a lot of interest in cloud computing generally. It's come to some areas of the supply chain, at least in one form or another, uh, a bit earlier. Has not to date seen a whole lot of action in WMS. Clearly the interest is there, though. We're seeing it from our readers and, and viewers. Where do you see cloud and WMS, Chad, going over the next three to five years? Uh, I really see cloud computing in general as uh, really becoming the standard in enterprise architecture and in enterprise software deployments. And I think that's going to extend into WMS uh, as well. I mean, the benefits in terms of getting these things up and running, minimizing uh, the dependence on the IT organization, 
really looking at your core competencies, which in most cases is not maintaining uh, a WMS system uh, and administering a WMS system and then leaving that to the technology provider who really does that well. I mean, think of all the engineering capabilities we have as a software company, and we can apply those to providing all the support and enhancements of your system. I think cloud-based WMS is going to be the standard as opposed to the exception in five years. And, and Chad, just to be clear on that, is that not just in kind of small and medium warehouses where it's had a little bit of success this, this, thus far, but even in larger, more sophisticated uh, distribution centers? Absolutely, and uh, I think this is the trend in enterprise software in general. I think a lot of large corporate IT organizations are going to be looking at their core competencies and realizing that they need to trust their technology providers to provide more of the service to them so they can focus on their core competencies, which in a lot of cases is not in a administering enterprise software systems. Okay. Well, Chad, it's been a fantastic discussion, certainly a topic of uh, big interest to us here as well as uh, I'm sure our uh, audience. Look forward to some updates as we go forward. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. Great. Thanks for having me, Dan.